today we are test driving a 4.1 liter Cayman track car. Now this one's pretty special. It was our very first 4.1 liter Cayman build. It was engine only when we first did the job, so we never actually got to see the car. So it's pretty exciting to have it come back around for some uh, maintenance and some upgrades while it was here. And now we're going to take it for a spin and see how she does. So this not only was our first 4.1 liter Cayman, but it was actually the first Hartec 4.1 liter Cayman built in the world. Now then, where the concept for that came from is Hartec was already building their 3.6 liter 997 to 4.1 liters. And what most people don't realize is the 997.1 3.6 liter actually uses the exact same heads, the exact same cams, and the exact same intake manifold as the Caymans, uh, even to the point that it's 987 Cayman part numbers. And so the rest of it was set up and ready. Hartech had already tested that. And so all we did was apply that knowledge and testing to the Caymans. And it's really become one of our flagship engines, especially for track use. Woo. Can tell this thing's a little lighter, a little quicker, a little meaner. Make sure I don't exceed the track limit. So while we had it back in, we went ahead and replaced the clutch with our 415 foot pound sprung organic performance clutch. And then we also refurbed the ASCO lightweight flywheel. That's one of my favorite features of the ASCO flywheels is you can simply replace the friction surface as opposed to either having to get it ground from hot spots or worse yet, having to, uh, having to fully replace it. This may be one of the quickest naturally aspirated cars of ours I've driven yet. In all of our race cars and heavy track builds, we recommend the Motul 300V 10W60. Now then, we've also gotten some recent used oil analysis results back on some street cars that have used that as well successfully. Um, what's interesting is Modal says you can go a little bit longer on it, but what we found in the used oil analysis is it was holding up extremely well. The oxidation values look good. The additive package had not worn out. The viscosity looked good. It really looked less worn than maybe some of the lower viscosity oils or street oils. And I think that's partly because one, the 300V has such a high quality base package that it's able to maintain that better. But two, it also handles heat so much better being the 10W60 that we just don't see quite as much wear of the additive package. Now I also got a chance to update the tune while I had it, which was nice. Everything looked pretty good, except the fuel trims were a little higher, or they're pulling a little more fuel than I would have liked. So we essentially dropped what we call the Kirkty or the injector constant, and that helped even everything out. 
and then got the fuel trims back in or the mean fuel trims back into the single digits where I like to see them. The rest of the data looked really good on it. And they've really done a nice job building this car out. It feels good, it's quick, it's light, but yet it's not so... It's not so stiff that it makes it uncomfortable to drive. So it's a really well done, what could be a daily driver or an arrive and drive track car, or simply just a dedicated track car. I really like how they've how they've set it up and, and finished it out. Ah, a little race brake squeal. Always kind of makes me smile. So yeah, so this one feels good, looks good. I've already looked at the data off of the tuning revisions. The data looks good. I think this one's ready to go back into service and head back out on the track. We'll look forward to getting this back to its owner and definitely enjoyed getting a chance to drive it while it was here. Very fun, very well built, very planted. So thanks for joining us and coming along. Until next time, take care.